A mouse can kill a rattlesnake. They can bite really hard. They have big teeth and strong jaws. Oh, wow, look at this. It ate a rodent. There's the rodent's face. The rodent bit through the snake. Morning. It's cloudy outside. Yesterday, the valley finally got some rain. Um, we didn't up in the North Valley. It skipped us and showed up to the south. But I'm gonna go out right now to just go and see if there's anything out. I have a camera trap I gotta go pick up too, so I'm gonna do those two things. But I need to keep one eye on the hotline. Uh, it's just Marissa on this morning. We're shorthanded for a couple of reasons. I'm on the line, so I need to be able to just, if she gets called out, run out of here and go be ready to go run some calls. So there's a potential for a pretty busy morning or not. I don't know, but that's why I'm out here. We're gonna see if there's anything actually moving. Going through this wash, looking for desert tortoises and rattlesnakes and all the stuff that has lived here forever and uh, doing so to the sound of construction right there. It's kind of the story of our lives, right? These places all get developed, everybody, and I get it. You know, I think that's something that is real easy for people love wildlife. Uh, to say is like, stop buying houses out there. It's happening, we have lots of people. Lots and lots of people, there's more people all the time. And we all buy these houses. Um, you know, I live in one, you know. These are houses that the snakes that I'm seeing in this wash right now that I'm studying ecology of where and where what they do and, and all that is going to end up in that backyard at some point. So it's important to, to look at all this stuff. And while I was talking about this, I turned the camera on and I looked over, there's a long nosed snake sitting in here. Ignore the construction sounds. There it is. So long-nosed snakes are primarily nocturnal, but they are often seen in the daytime. And actually I see them in the daytime quite often. In the late afternoon, and particularly like in May, uh, right as it's starting to get hot, and then during the monsoon in the mornings, it's pretty common to see them out and about, not just returning home, but actually out hunting and, and uh, doing different things. Now there are other factors that cause snake encounters. Actually half the factor. It's not just when snakes are active, it's when people are active. So through most of the really hot times of summer, people are sleeping through the primary snake activity period. And right now it is not quite six o'clock in the morning and people are starting to get up and they're letting the dog out for the morning before they go to work and starting to go on a morning hike or jog or walk around, just doing their things. And they're catching the tail end of all the nocturnal snake activity. Throughout the evening, snakes are out running around doing all kinds of things and ending up sitting in ambush somewhere, usually. And then they start to move once the sun comes up and the heat of the day starts rolling in. At the same time that everybody's out starting to do all their things, the snakes make a movement largely, you know, within the, the same little time period back to the places that they're gonna hide for the day. Sometimes that's under a house or under the patio. So that's why we get this morning rush of snake activity calls, people calling for relocations. It's not because the snakes are necessarily suddenly out uh, around the time that people start getting ready for work. And it's that the snakes are already out and then people see them. So as I always say in these things, it's not enough to just look at snakes. An encounter with a rattlesnake takes two. It takes a snake and it takes the person that's observing it. <laughs> Any minute now, I expect our phone to start going nuts. I just hope I can get to where my camera is before then so I can at least run out of here to go help with the hotline if I need to. So I was looking at that little cave right there and thinking, well, it's not exactly good enough. I mean, something could hide there. There's a better one right over there, but this little draw here, something's gonna be here. So I started coming up here to take a little bit of a closer look and look at that. There's a Western Diamondback sitting there in ambush along the base of this little plant here. So why is it right here? Well, there's probably a rodent trail or something that's maybe going through here. Maybe there's a rodent that lives under there or is using a pack rat nest that's over there. Whatever, this animal probably picked up that scent, came out here and is sitting right alongside where that would be. So if that rodent comes through here, bam, there's no more mouse. If it does do that, it's not like uh, likely to hang on to it too. Usually what happens, the rodent doesn't even know what happens. Um, it's just running through the area and suddenly 
it's hurt real bad. It runs off, dies over here somewhere. The snake waits a little bit and then goes off and finds uh, its prey that's already dead so it doesn't have to fight it. And yeah, a mouse can kill a rattlesnake. They can bite really hard. They have big teeth and strong jaws. One bite to the wrong area on the snake and it can severely injure or even kill that snake. So that venom is not, um, you know, it's, it's an assassin's tool. It's a weapon to use for predation and uh, it works very well. It makes them avoid physical fights. They're very fragile animals. These are very good places for animals to hide and then get deep under the ground. These are basically the things you don't want to create on your property. These caves like this. So if you make something at your house that looks like this, it, sh it can't be a surprise that the snake is going to move into it at some point or find it useful, especially when the place that it used to use got bulldozed to make the house. So here's a really old fire ring. This is in an area that there used to be a lot of mining. Uh, another activity with people. A lot of good history here. And I remember seeing a diamondback right over here one time. So I always check it. So I came up here to look to see if there's any snakes here. And there is. There's a western diamondback right here. And there's another western diamondback tucked in right there. Those two snakes have been estivating here for a couple of months now. So I'm going to back off. I'm going to get some photos of these snakes sitting here. Oh, shit. <laughs> there's another one right there. A third rattlesnake. I didn't even see it. And they live in this cave right here. And I'm looking in this cave. And right off the bat, there's a desert tortoise sitting right there. So these are very important places, these animals. They all live together in these burrows. It's a good place that they can stay out of the heat and survive a pretty brutal summer. Okay, good news. It's like nobody's stolen my camera. Maybe a little over a month at this point. I did a little thing, I put a air tag on them too, so someone walks off with them. Oh, there's still battery. Are you gonna pick, ooh, 504 pictures. That's cool. I'm not seeing much, but oh well. Something's on there. I'm gonna take a peek in this hole also. Let's see. Last year when I was here, I was looking at this spot with Vicky from Desert Foothills Land Trust, um, who owns this property. We were setting up the camera and looking, and while we're talking, a diamond pack comes. <laughs> cruising in, doesn't even pay attention to us. It's like, I'm just going home, don't mind me. There is nobody in there at all. Last time I looked in here, there were some tortoises and a Gila monster, but nobody's home, so they're all out. Hoping for rain. Aren't we all? All right. The sun is coming up. Stuff's gonna start moving back to their hiding spots, which means people might start running into them. So I'm about to 15 or 20 minute fast walk away from my car. So I'm gonna go ahead and check in available. Marissa's ready on and ready. And let's just wait and see what happens. And here's a shed skin. This is old shed skin too. Let's look at it. Old shed, okay. We got big diamond shaped scales. No keel. That keel is a ridge down the middle. So it's not a rattlesnake. It's not a gopher snake. So I did the trick. Uh, hotline wasn't really popping off as much as I was thinking. Marissa ended up running a call. So I stopped at uh, local Johnny's up here in Cave Creek, my favorite breakfast spot. Just ordered some food and told everybody and said in our Slack channel, like, hey, I'm gonna order some food. That'll get the line going. Within one minute, there was a call to Cave Creek. So I just set the probable speed record for eating breakfast that showed up about the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like two bites and I'm headed out <coughs> to that call right now. Glad I got some food in. Glad that worked out. <coughs> Hi. Hey. How you doing? I'm okay. How you doing? So she was sniffing around where that cardboard was. Mm -hmm. She yelped and took off. And um, I seen the head pop up, you know. Ah. He's in the uh, back corner of, like, 12 inches back on this side. On oh, this I see side. it. See him? I see him? Yeah. He blends pretty good. Oh, it's, it ate something. It's a gopher snake. Oh, is it a gopher? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big gopher snake. Oh. 
So he won't hurt you. And it ate something, and the snake has an injury of some kind too. Oh, yeah, see. Cool. Oh wow, look at this. So this is beautiful. Okay, so this it ate a. Okay, yeah. Look at this. This is amazing. It ate a rodent. There's the rodent's face. Trying to bite. Try to eat at him. Yeah, the rodent bit through the snake. Uh, so I'm gonna. This guy's probably going to a vet. <laughs> A mouse can kill a rattlesnake. They can bite really hard. They have big teeth and strong jaws. One bite to the wrong area on the snake and it can severely injure or even kill that snake. So yeah, yeah he's he's alive, but yeah, the rodent chewed through its yeah. belly. Its oh, nose is sticking. That's amazing. I've never seen that before. No, I mean, it happens. I mean, that's, that's why, that's why animals have venom, I guess. That venom is it's an assassin's tool. It's a weapon to use for predation. It makes them avoid physical fights. They're very fragile animals. Well, I'll take a real, they're liking this weather. I just yeah. just yeah. came from yeah. a, a wash yeah. rose out yeah. looking for, for them and I found yeah. four yeah. of them pretty quickly, so. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna get a little different, closer look at what's going on. Um, you can see, so it looks like this snake was eating probably a rabbit and that is the nose of that rabbit yeah it's not good um, I don't know if that's a survivable wound or not but um, you know gopher snakes are pretty tough but especially with that nose sticking out like that of that animal that it ate uh, it's gonna need more than just time to recoup so I'm gonna make a phone call or two and probably take a drive. I'm gonna pull over and see if I can find somebody that can help this animal. Um, there's not a lot of places that we can take injured snakes. I'm gonna take it to uh, Liberty Wildlife and just show up with it. They've helped us out before with some things. If you have a, an injured bird, there's a ton of options. If you have an injured mammal, lots of people wanna help. If you have an injured Reptile, not so much. Okay, I'm at uh, Liberty Wildlife. I'm gonna go drop this snake off, and uh, I'm not gonna film that part just because, you know, they got their own thing going on here. I'm gonna go drop this animal off, tell them what's going on, uh, and also if the snake survives, uh, I'm gonna want it back because I'm gonna take it back and I'm going to release it back onto the property of the home where it was was found. Um, I talked to those homeowners, they would be just fine with that. I'll let them know, of course, but I'm doing that and that'd be the best outcome. Uh, I hope that happens. Hey, I have some bad news. Unfortunately, that gopher snake did not survive. So they took it in and tried their best and uh, didn't make it through the night. So I wish it would have turned out a different way, but something to consider here is that this was a naturally occurring thing between two animals. This was the cottontails and the gopher snake. And uh, for once, not an animal that was injured by a person. Uh, so I wish it would have turned out differently, of course, but uh, it didn't. And that's okay, it was worth trying. Uh, big thanks to Liberty Wildlife for taking in this animal and giving everything that they could uh, to try to rescue it. We have uh, had some other successes with them in the past, so I'm really happy that they were able to take it in. We're always gonna give it a shot. We're not always just gonna show you success stories on here. And it is nice to know there are other people out there that care about them and would like to see them out there doing their thing.